now I'm going to finish with the third one on Providence and South Dakota State. And um, Adam Trigger and I talked about this the other day on Wager Talk Today. It's a fascinating game for me because when the brackets came out on Sunday night, two teams I was really curious to see who they'd have is Providence and South Dakota State. And, of course, they end up playing each other. Maybe that's a coincidence. Once again, maybe it's intentional. But South Dakota State, the best three-point shooting team really in recent history, getting about, what, 44%, 46% on the season, number one in the country out of 358 teams. Providence, meanwhile, the luckiest team out of all 358 in the Ken Palm luck rankings and some others, uh, they rank only like in the 40s for the power rating. That'd be like a 10 or an 11 seed, and <laughs> they got a four seed. Odds makers are obviously saying this is not your typical three, a 13-4 game with a point spread of two. And uh, Drew, I'll throw it back to you first. Um, Providence only a two-point favorite. It actually opened two and a half. Um, South Dakota State, a tremendous offensive team. They play fast. Obviously, in a one-and-done scenario, a team that can shoot the three like South Dakota State is always dangerous. Surprisingly, though, the totals come down from 151.5 to 149.5. You would think if, you know, a little money comes in on South Dakota State, you'd see some money on the over maybe, but it's been the other way. Uh, South Dakota State in the under so far. Uh, how are you looking, Drew Martin? Gosh, what what an interesting handicap here. You know, this is uh, a lot going into this one, Steve. No doubt about it. You bring up the point spread. You bring, you know, even the seeding wise. I, I would think this is a unique situation in terms of the lowest point spread, given the discrepancy in the seeding for the tournament. Um, and you can see why. I mean, you look you look at the Jackrabbits. Talk about uh, good mascots there, South Dakota State. They've won twenty one games in a row. Uh, they haven't lost this year. They actually haven't lost since December 20th of 2021. You bring up the fact number one team in the country in three-point percentage, number one field goal percentage as well, and they knock down their free throws. So very talented shooting team overall. Guys, uh, very, very high IQ basketball team with South Dakota State. Now from the Summit League, um, got to bring that into account. We've been talking conferences here, and that's going to matter a lot in the tournament, how these teams play now, given strength of schedule coming to the forefront. You know, Ed Cooley, a lot of people down on him with Providence, uh, saying a kind of a luckier team this season. Uh, you know, make what you will with the word luck. I don't know. I think there's actually something to this, though. You know, a, 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 an older team, you know, an experienced team winning close games. I actually think that there's uh, there there's repetitiveness in there. That, that That's kind of a talent to it, talking about Providence here. And only minus two guys. No secrets now. You know, uh, South Dakota State. Very publicly bet team in round one. So uh, this is our early game as well. Something to note here. But Steve, this is a tough one. And to tell you the truth, I'll probably kick the trend here at taking South Dakota State. Give me Providence. Uh, give me the Friars here if you need a side. Yeah, and you're right. It is an early game. We started with those late night games. This is, uh, I believe, like a 1240 Eastern game there, Adam. And uh, South Dakota State, yeah, 44% from three-point range this season. Number one in the country. Obviously, in a one-and-done scenario, one-game scenario, that's always dangerous. Um, talking about that luck factor, I mean, we've all talked about it a lot on different shows the last few months. Just for the viewers out there, I mean, basically the Ken Palm luck factor, from my understanding, I don't put a lot of credence in it. It's basically kind of straight up wins, right? You've won more, you've lost more than you should. It's not really a point spread indicator. Um, but what it does tell me is maybe, you know, teams are a little bit weaker than their overall record. But obviously the betting markets, the odds makers pay attention to it because like this two point spread, like Drew said, is very low for a 413 game. Um, Adam, do you think South Dakota State is for real? They play fast, which concerns me, but their shooting's pretty enticing. Uh, how are you playing this one? So we, we've got a few extra minutes with just two of us. So I just want to point out what's going on here with like a lot of these games because go back to our, our breakdown of Vermont, Arkansas, and then this game, like the, this is what the odds makers are doing. They know that the, the, the betting public is going to want to bet dogs, and that's like rare or, you know, it's not, it doesn't really line up with the rest of the season, but that's how it goes in March. So what they're going to do is hang a number that they know is going to get action, but that someone as smart as Drew Martin Betts knows in the, you know, probably why he's on Arkansas and Providence is a number that's too short. And that's what we have going on here there. So this is a, a scenario where, yeah, like I'd love to look toward South Dakota or South Dakota state, because I do think they are capable of beating Providence, but it, you know, we're looking at at numbers more so than teams, and I I don't know that South Dakota State at plus two is is really a good bet here. You know, you have to look at so what South Dakota State they like they shoot the lights out obviously, but they play through Douglas Wilson, who's their leading scorer. Uh, 
their their sort of big man. That's their post presence. He's going to have to go up against Nate Watson here. He's probably not used to, you know, in the Summit League, they don't have many Nate Watsons. Those Most of those guys you're going to find in the bigger conferences. Uh, Douglas Wilson's been someone that's gotten himself in foul trouble quite frequently. And in Providence, they're as good as any team in drawing fouls. And, and Nate Watson could, could really have his way uh, with Douglas Wilson in this matchup. Um, so, yeah, has Providence been lucky? Of course, you know, based on that metric. But I have to say that's built in here. And, and at some point, you know, there's luck and then there's just like making clutch plays and, you know, Providence, they, they've done that as, as well as anyone. Uh, the other thing that may undervalue Providence a little bit is they haven't had Al Durham. They, they didn't have a healthy Al Durham for a stretch. Uh, he should be go, good to go here. Uh, so I think that's significant. So in, in this case, like this would be a spot where I think there's, there's enough merit on South Dakota state. I think they're a good enough team where I'd love to take a shot with them as an underdog. Uh, maybe uh, in the five, you know, four and a half, five, five and a half range. But at this number, you know, I think that Providence is probably the correct play against the number, and they're just basically going to dare you to. So they know they're the odds makers know they're going to get the South Dakota State money, and then they're going to dare the sharp betters, if you will, to take what is a very favorable number with Providence. What is a very favorable number with Arkansas, and it's it's honestly why a lot of these first round games uh, are end up being good games to sit out or look toward the total. Uh, and, and you know you got to hope that you can find a couple in there that they that that are not that way. And you know it, it should help you thin out your action for the first couple days if you can kind of spot these scenarios like this one and say, okay, I just don't know if I'm getting the right price uh, to back South Dakota State here or. Maybe I want to jump in with Providence because I'm probably getting a good number. Yeah, it's Steve. Another reason I, I, I thought. Yeah. You know, Steve, sorry to jump in, but yeah, I thought I thought Trig made a great point in terms of, you know, sometimes the market here it, 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 getting a little bit too cute. You know, minus two here for Providence. If you're betting South Dakota State, look, they might be the right side. They could win this game outright. But the fact is, I mean, you got to go back to what is the number. Bet numbers, not teams, that kind of sentiment. Looking at Arkansas, looking at Providence here. And the fact, I left out one thing, actually two things here. A lot of people are going to look at that game that they lost against Creighton. I, they only shot 12% from three-point range. So, you know, put that up to their normal uh, kind of percentages from uh, beyond the three-point line, uh, 34%. And that game is a lot different. That was the last game out. I think betters are kind of remembering that a lot. This is a team that was within two possessions both times against Villanova. We can see where Villanova is seated. So they've gone up against really good competition. South Dakota State, not so much. Look, I know a lot of people out there, Steve, liking the Jackrabbits. Uh, they're a sexy pick. They, they could win it outright. I just think that there's a lot here riding for Providence that a lot of people aren't talking about, plus the fact they actually defend the three-point line very well. Three-point defense is something I like to look at, Steve, because everybody focusing on three-point offense, and it is the number one three-point shooting team in the country. Talking about the Jackrabbits here, uh, I think three-point defense is riding a little bit under the radar as well, looking towards Providence. Yeah, Providence allows 31% shooting from beyond the arc against teams that averaged about 34. Obviously, that's tougher competition. So that 34 is probably like, you know, 37 in the Summit League. And then if you look at South Dakota State, yes, they shot 44 and a half, almost 45%. Their opponents gave up 36% on average. And those were weaker opponents on top of that, like you're saying, Drew. So I think that's the trickiest thing here is how much do you give extra points to Providence for that much tougher yeah. schedule? How much do you penalize South Dakota State? And that's what's tricky about the NCAA tournament. And one other thing you brought up, I'm glad you brought up that blowout loss. I should have mentioned that earlier. As I said, you know, Providence is a team the Sharps are fading because they were lucky. But, boy, that, that blowout loss, I think, if anything, is a positive for Providence because, first of all, it's going to have them focused. And then, as you said, that probably took a basket off the point spread. You know, and it does seem almost like this is a little yeah. bit too public. And we always get a little nervous, you know, when we see a very public underdog, especially as a 13 seed, getting only two points. Um, I'm actually, right after the show, guys, I'm going to record my – Aid the public college basketball style. So I'm going to talk more about this game. So some good insight from you guys I'm going to include as well because this was the one that jumped out to me of all the games that we have a real public dog here, 13 seed, getting only two points. South Dakota State, Providence, 1240 Eastern. You don't have to wait long on Thursday afternoon to find out the result.